Hey everyone, and welcome to another video here on my channel. My personal one, and that's because recently I've been doing binary trees and generally trees in school. I know that's not very hard, but it's still a very interesting concept. And I wanted to approach that in Haskell. We're not doing it in Haskell in school, we're actually doing it in Java. But I think doing it in Haskell is really interesting, and to be honest, I just recorded it. I was explaining binary trees, how I understand them to you, and then actually programmed it live while thinking about it. And it took like 30 minutes to be uh, precisely done, but since I forgot to record the microphone, I'm just going to well show you the code, and beforehand I'll just show you how it works if you don't know. If you know how binary trees trees work and you'll just want and you just want to see my code in Haskell, I'll put the time in the description below so you can jump to that or skip to that and just watch that piece of the video. All right, so let's say we have an ordered list or array of uh, maybe let's not start at zero, let's start at one. Zero, one. As sorry, one, two, three, and four, and five, and maybe six too. So we have these elements. And let's say we want to have a way of sorting these so we can efficiently find them quickly. That'd be nice if we are really looking for just one element. Let's say we were looking for the three. How would I find the three efficiently? I don't want to go around and, well, go through the list till I find it because, I mean, that's a, that's okay if it's that short, but if it's really long, if there's a lot of data, that's really inefficient. And for that, we have binary trees. It's a sort of tree. A tree, just to be, um, just to explain to you what a tree is, if you don't know, a tree is a structure. Um, universal structure basically um, and it has something called a root so think of this as a node this node holds any kind of data let's say you could write a one in here or you can write in some word or something like that and then that node or well that root points toward another one another node that holds data and it also po points to something else let's just say it ends here Okay, so, and how do you really know when something's a tree? Well, in a tree, everything except for the root has a prior node. So this one has one, this one has one, and the la the first one, in this case, has none. And if you look at the arrows, so they all point downwards here in that case, and that one is not being pointed toward, and it's pointed towards something else. This is the root, and that's the only exception. If that's the case, you know you are you have a tree. And one specific tree that I've just talked about is a binary tree, and it looks like this. So we have a node, again our root, and then it points in two directions in this case. And then we have a node here and a node here. And that's called that's why it's a binary tree. It ha has well two options to go from uh, to each side. Um, to go to from each uh, on each side. So here we have, we could have this and this. In the real world, however, we have examples, we have cases where there's no left. Um, just to really explain it to you, a binary tree usually has some idea behind it. So you could say what is on the left and what is on the right. In most cases, um, the first thing you use it for is for number sorting or well number structuring or whatever you call that and I always have the smaller number on the left and the upper and the, the higher number um, the bigger number on the right so yeah so let's just say um, that's hypothetical but let's just say we have a 5 here and on the right would be a 3 because it's lower and on the and on, on the left is a 3 because it's lower and on the right is a 7 because it's bigger and here on the left on the right to the 7 would be a 9 because it's bigger than a 7 and here on the right of the 3 would be a 4 
and on the left of a 3 would be a, a 1, for instance. Exactly. So, and now if you were looking for the 9, for instance, you'd say, okay, I have a 9. Let's go in here. 5 is, uh, well, a 5 is smaller, so I have to go to the right. A 7 is smaller than my 9, so I have to go to the right. A 9 and 9 equals, so here that's where my element is. If I was looking for a 4, I could say, okay, I have a 4. 4 is smaller than 5, I have to go left. 4 is bigger than 3, I have to go to the right. 4 is 4. Here it is. Okay. Uh, easy enough. Let's uh, give an exact exact. Example, let's write that again, 3, 4, and 5, and 6, so you really understand. So there you go, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and now I'd, um, what I'd do is I'll, I'll say how long is this list. I'll say L for length. This list is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 elements long, so 6. And this guy, the first element, the head, starts with a zero as an index. And this would be one, this would be two, three, four, and five, so that'd be a five. And these two numbers I call minimum and maximum. So the head is the minimum, the zero in that case, and the five is the maximum. The, the last possible, or the biggest possible index in that list. So, and the idea now is to split that in the middle. So we'd say, since we're not thinking about the length, but because uh, we th we're thinking about the indices, we're going to say, well, possible indices are 5, um, that'd be L minus 1 divided by 2. Let's do it for this array, and that'd be, since that's 6, 6 minus 1 is, what is it? Well, yeah, that's 5, and divided by 2 is 2.5. Now we're running into an issue here. Indices are integers, or well, they're, they are usually in most programming languages. They're their own types, but in, they're usually in integers. Just, um, well, have their own functionality. So 2.5 is not an integer, so we have to think about what to do with it. We have to round it, obviously, into an integer, but do we do it downward or upward? Well, that's up to you. We're going to seal it in this case. It's 3. So that will be like that always. It's always going to be sealed. And that's um, okay, since the only floating point number that we'll get will anyway be 0.5. It will always be 0.5, since... We do not have floating points in here, and if we divide a number, the only floating point that will come to us is going to be a 0.5. Okay, so 3. 3 is our index that we want for our middle, for our mid element. element. So that'd be 0, 1, 2, 3. That'd be a 4. So we'll start with a 4. Now, I'd, now I said... We're going to, um, on the right is always something that's bigger, and on the left is always something that's smaller in our example. And my idea is we're going to, well, get a range, basically. In Haskell, there's nothing like that as far as I know, but uh, that'd be this and this. So that'd be, let's just say that's N. That'd be the minimum to to n mi uh, minus 1, and that'd be n plus 1 to the maximum. So that'd look like this, 5 and 6. That's not here, that's on the, on the line, basically, 5 and 6. And that's a little bigger, it's a little longer, that's 1, 2, and 3. And now, we're basically doing it for each of these branches. We're, uh, we're what we just done, we're going to do for each of these. Uh, so that's also recur recursion, because the way we calculated this just now, that's a function, and we're just going to repeat it until we're done. So here, we have three elements. 3 minus 1, like just this here, that's the length, right? 3 minus 1, that's 2, divided by 2 is 1, so we're going to 1, 0, 1, so that's 2. Okay, and we'll... 
then we have uh, leftovers. We have leftovers, <laughs> and that's uh, three to the right and one to the left. And uh, well, here, let's do that again. Two minus one. Well, that's one divided by two is uh, 0 0.5. It's one zero one, so that's a six. And then here's well, five is not bigger than six. It's uh, here on this side. It's five. So here you see that some, there is something missing. And uh, just to, so you know what I'm going to do is I'll have an algebraic data type in Haskell. You don't really need to understand it if you don't know Haskell. And uh, I'll call it binary tree and it can either be a branch. A branch will have a, its own value, a left side and, and a right side, which uh, both of these are optional. However, they do not have to be uh, filled since like you have places like this and if you have something that does not have at least one that follows it a node then I call it leave like this that'd be a leaf that'd be a branch because it has one that follows that that'd be a leaf that'd be a leaf since nothing follows and that'd be a branch that's a branch I think I said that already so exactly that's what it is that's how it works I hope you've under. Uh, I I hope you got the gra. Uh, you got you got that. You got a grip of it. I hope. So let's look at Haskell. I have a little application right here that I bought in the Mac App Store, and it's pretty cool. It's a playground for Haskell. And here, you see, that's the example we just had. And um, here's the code. Here's um. Here here I can use it actually. We don't need that. And here's our output, if I drag that longer. Here you can see that fairly well. You here you see on, for instance, um, sorry, not zero, you just <laughs> open itself. Here you can see just um, that just as, well, one of the two possibilities of a, of a maybe, that's our optional. If it's just that holds a value, if it holds none, it's nothing, as you can see here, nothing. Um, here we have a branch and it holds the value 6 and then on, on the left is a leaf called 5 and on the right is nothing. Let's check that again. 6 on the left is 5, on the right is nothing. That's exactly what we have here. So that's correct. Well, you can look at the other things, but let's just get to the code really quickly. Um, so right, here's my algebra data type that I talked about earlier. It can either be a branch that holds a value of integer in this case, and then a maybe binary tree, and a maybe binary tree. Um, I'll, co uh, I'll come back to that in a second. Or it can be a leaf that just holds its value. For instance, like this guy, or this guy, or this guy, which have no other branches going from them. That's why they're a leaf and not a branch. They're a leaf. Here, uh, so a binary tree is either one of these two, and so and that means here it can I, that can either hold nothing at all or it can hold a leaf or it can hold an own branch again. So that makes sense, I hope. Um, and let's get to the next function, which is called get range. Well actually let's skip that. I'll explain it in a second. Here, get bt, get bt, bt stands for binary tree. It takes a it takes a list of integer. It could actually be anything that's uh, that you can order. But uh, I'll, I just did it with integers for this case. In this case, since uh, that's what I want to show it to you, and then we have a maybe binary tree. Since if you supply a, if you supply a empty list as a as an argument, you'll get nothing back. So that's also something nice that maybe allows us to do. So then here we have our list L, and um, we have two cases. If um, down here I just renamed some functions so it, it, it's nicer to read. So minimum uh, is just zero, so that's also the end. I'm talking about indices here. So minimum is zero. I could have just uh, actually used zero, but I think minimum is just way nicer to read. So minimum is zero, and then max length uh, of our list minus one. That's what I showed you earlier, so that's sensible. And here, mid. That's our middle index, and that works uh, fairly. Not, that works nicely. So we, here we have our max. That's our integer of uh, the length. Um, well, 
the last index, right? We divide it by 2, and if you divide, you will get back a fractional, I believe? And that's not an integer type, since, as we've talked about earlier, you'll get the case where there is a floating point. And what we'll do here is from, we'll turn it into an integral, so here from integral, and then afterwards, we'll, we'll get a ceiling, or, or we'll, we'll seal it, so we round it up. And afterwards, a ceiling actually returns an, an integral type as well, and so it turns into an integer, we do this. Okay, and here uh, I needed the get range in order for us to recursively use get bt again on the other branches or leaves. As I said earlier, where we have um, our new lists that we create, or, or well, that's what we're going to do now. I needed something to create these ranges. Maybe there's a way of doing that in Haskell without creating an own function, but I didn't really find anything proper, so I just went with this, where you have a list, and you take the starting point and the end point of where you want to generate. And that'd be, for instance, um, let's go back here. For here, uh, for instance, on the left side, it would be the minimum to n minus 1, and here it'd be n plus 1 to the maximum. And uh, if, we're if we go here, again, um, get range for the left, you see L minimum mid minus 1, so exactly what I said, and on the right, the list again, mid plus 1, maximum. Okay, that's nice. So. One case that I have here is if minimum and maximum equal each other, so if um, they are the same, then, well, we could have used either, but then just return a leaf and get the element at either minimum or maximum, since that's the same. There's not going to be any, it's not going to be a branch since the list is only one element long, and uh, yeah, it, if we create another one, that'd just be... Uh, that doesn't make sense, so here you go. And then otherwise, so in every other case, we just have, um, to remember, this is just because of the maybe. And here, branch, um, well, hold its own value. So the mid value, the mid index is where the current values add for our branch. And then here, get bt left. So we just recursively use this on our left, where we create the range on, and the same for for the right side. And that's it. Um, that's everything it does and it works really well. And there you go. I hope that helped. I hope you got to understand binary trees if you haven't or if you were looking for how to do it in Haskell. Here you go. I'm not quite sure if this is the best way of solving it. Probably not. It was just my way of doing it. I wasn't really researching what other people did or do. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!